I finally got there, staining our bedroom floor. It's taken a lot longer than it should have done. It should have been much easier than it has been. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened, what went wrong, and how you can achieve the perfect finish on any engineered oak or other wood floor that you wanna stain. Now, I installed this floor a month ago, and if you haven't seen that video and you're interested to know how I did it, the link's coming up on the screen now. To stain and seal this floor, I decided to stick with the winning formula I used a few years ago in my bathroom, which is colour tone stain from Treetex combined with their hard wax oil in a clear mat. And I love Treetex because in spite of all the heavy traffic it gets, three years down the line, the bathroom floor looks as good as the day it was stained. So in today's toolkit, we've got two different shades of colour tone, ebony and antique oak. I'll come on to why I've got two in a minute. And just to run through a few other features, you can use it on most timbers, on most internal wood surfaces, including floors, stairs, doors, furniture and worktops. 0.5 litres covers approximately 10 square metres. It's a stain, not a finish, so you do need a hard wax oil final coat. And it's manufactured on a base of natural, sustainable raw materials. For everyone to say what a lovely smell it had while it was drying. To apply the stain they recommend a lint-free cloth but you get through far too much lint-free cloth if you were to do that because there's a lot of residue to remove. So I recommend good old-fashioned toilet roll and keep a bin liner handy to put all the stained toilet tissue in as you go. Disposable latex gloves are an absolute must for messy jobs like this. And I've got a mini roller tray, roller and roller sleeve and I'm using simulated mohair rollers for this job and a small half inch 12 millimeter paintbrush to get into any tricky gaps. Now I've only got a small floor to stain and you do need to remove the stain as you go. So you don't want to be doing huge areas in one go, but you might with a larger floor or to do the job quicker, want to upgrade to something like this, a nine inch wide roller. And to make the job a bit less back breaking, you could even combine it with one of these extension poles. And finally, I'm a massive fan of knee pads for any job that involves kneeling down. I generally use these Dewalt knee pads, but I haven't really looked after them on all the jobs I've been doing, so the chances are they'd scratch the floor. So today I had to make do with these knee pads from JCB that you slip into your trousers. Assuming, of course, you've got work trousers with a relevant pocket in the knee pad. I've got to be honest with you, they're not terribly good. They tend to fall out. So you'd be very wise to invest in a pair of these. As usual, details of all the tools I've used in today's video will be in the description below the video. Now, colour tone does admittedly come in a pretty wide variety of colours, but we worked out when we did the bathroom floor that to get as accurate a match as possible with our old Victorian oak floor in the hallway, we would need to mix two thirds of antique oak with one third of ebony, which we've done here again by improvising with an old car windscreen detergent container. So the full tin of antique oak stain and half a tin of the ebony, I've got the perfect colour stain and I'm ready to go. Now, there are a few golden rules to follow when you're applying this colour tone stain and I'll come on to the rules that I breached shortly. But the, probably the main and most important rule is that when applying the stain, it's important to ensure an even colour that you remove all of the excess stain from the surface with the cloth or tissue as I discussed earlier. And if you do not remove all of that excess stain, the colour tone will not dry properly. So I start rollering the stain onto the floor. I want to apply enough stain for it to properly soak into the floor and into the gaps between the floorboards, but without leaving too much residue. And the simulated mohair roller sleeve is perfect for this. I then use my small paintbrush to coax the stain underneath the walls and into any tricky to reach spaces. So the best way I can describe to you work for moving away the, wiping away the residue is to sort of take it away with one side of the tissue so that it's pretty much no residue left on the surface and then I'm just flipping it over and giving it a light wipe with the other side of the tissue. What that's doing is it's removing any residual residue on the surface. One of the issues you have when you're doing this is overlapping onto one of the boards you've just cleaned off. Um, I've just got a new way of doing this. I'm just getting a, because of course you want to get a decent amount in to get into the grooves. But if you just get a paintbrush like this and just tickle into the gaps, that way you're not leaving a big overlap like that, which can be problematic. 
when sort of five, ten minutes later you come back to clear off the residue and you find it sort of sunk in a little bit too much into this existing board. Now you'll develop your own routine based on the size of your room and what works best for you. But as you can see here, I was working on two floorboards at a time, getting those stained the entire width of the room and then working across those two floorboards to remove that stain before starting on the next. I had a bin liner handy to put all of the stained tissues in and that whole process seems to work pretty well. So with the staining complete, I should have just been able to proceed and apply two coats of hard wax oil to seal the floor. But unfortunately it wasn't that straightforward because in the process of prepping the floor to get it absolutely perfect, I went over lots of blemishes, the odd scuff mark, I filled a few little areas and spot sanded with this 180 grit sandpaper. And unfortunately that was a fatal error because you need total uniformity across the surface that you're staining because otherwise the areas that you spot sand with your 180 grit sandpaper are going to be smoother than the other areas and the stain as I found out does not take so well in those areas. So just to demonstrate the point, say you've got a little mark or a scuff on your floorboard and you think oh, I'll just get a bit of 180 grit sandpaper. And I'll just sand that off. So that's lovely and clean. This is pretty much exactly what I did. Then you think, right, great, that's ready to stain. Then you cover your floorboard with stain. And you can see quite clearly here the area that I've spot sanded. And unfortunately in my effort to get the floor absolutely perfect before staining it, I ended up littering it with these spots. Now it says it's spot repairable but all my efforts to darken the light areas were unsuccessful and it left me with no alternative but to sand down each floorboard in question. This time with a coarser 80 grit sandpaper that felt more similar to the natural state of the floorboards before I had started and then restain it. But with the best wood in the world it was difficult to get the newly stained planks to match the originals and I did end up having to go over other areas of the floor with the stain to try and uniformize everything. So cautionary tale to you if you have got to do a bit of spot sanding additional prep work before staining make sure you use the right coarseness of sandpaper probably 80 to 120 grit Experiment on a little scrap of wood first and if you're not happy with the results of that I'm afraid you might have to sand the entire floor prior to staining. While it's not perfect I'd finally got the floor to a point where I was happy with it so it was time to start sealing it. After a quick vacuum to remove any residual dust and other debris. And this is where the magic really happens because you take a floor which is nice but has a bit of a sort of matte feel to it and you give it a lovely sealed satin well clear matte sheen which is incredibly durable whilst i start with my mini roller sleeve again simulated mohair here my advice to you would be to go with the nine inch or similar roller as i showed you earlier for your sealing coat because it'll make your job a lot easier a lot quicker and you'll probably even get a more consistent coverage putting two coats of this on so i'm not going to lather it on to start with i just want to make sure it's got an even film across the surface I think with this stuff the trick is to apply enough of the oil that it sinks nicely in between the gaps of the floorboards that you can see here. But then using the roller just take off the excess so that you have a nice even coat across the floor.
Right, coat number one of the hard wax oil was applied a few days ago. And I have to say I'm really pleased with the way it's looking. But there's just a very slight roughness where the sort of grain has been brought up by the oil. And whilst it doesn't tell you to do this, it actually says you don't need to do this. I'm just going to put with some 180 grit sandpaper, which I've put on this new gadget. Normally I use a block of wood or a sanding block like this. But I picked this up in Screwfix and handily it uses an entire length of typical sandpaper which means less wastage and you just clamp it at either end like this. I don't know, it's a bit of a weird tool. It looks like a cross between a sort of plasters tool and a sandpaper block. <laughs> we'll see how we get on with it. 180 grit sandpaper. I'm just very gently going over each board just to take off that rough grain. See that's great now. I'm doing this really lightly. I don't really want to penetrate the coat of oil, let alone the stain. I just want to very gently take off that rough end grain before applying the second coat of hard wax oil. Then it's just a case of giving the floor a very quick vacuum before applying the second coat. With a three to six hour drying time, depending on conditions and maximum hardness over a 24 hour period, the floor was finally finished. So we got there in the end and the interesting thing is it actually looks a lot better in real life than it does on the video. But I hope you can see here, there's this really nice durable clear matte finish now to the wood which most importantly looks authentic and has given the floor an aged look. So I hope you found today's video useful and that it's shown you that this is actually a really easy job to do as long as you avoid the pitfalls that I've identified in today's video. Don't forget, details of everything I've used today will be in the description below the video, which you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. If you've liked today's video, please click on the like button below and stay tuned over the coming weeks when I'll be doing a load of other videos to show you things that need fixing, painting and finishing off in this room. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here. Your support means so much to me. Thanks and see you soon.